Capricorn. Hello Capricorn, this is your September forecast for 2013 and we're heading into autumn which harmonizes really well with your own sun sign. It's the element of earth. So you're grounding yourself but at the same time we got the sun, mercury and new moon in the ninth house and this means that you're also starting to yearn for more knowledge. So some of you got antsy feet to start doing your research or taking a class. Really getting yourself out there and uh, picking all those beautiful inner spiritual insights as well. Now it's a great time if you have any papers that you need to publish or if you have a new book, ebook, those kind of things. It's really putting you in touch with the people that can get you out there. The ninth house also has to do with travel. Now yes, we can see short distance travel because we want to look at the opposite house, the third house which is more around where you are today. The ninth house, though, is more the foreign travels, getting yourself out, meeting people in other cultures. Then we have Venus. It has been uh, transiting through your 10th house here in August, and that has put some of your energy on the map of wanting to get ahead in your career. Now, even in September, you'll have a little bit of Venus's help until the 10th then she'll pass into Scorpio. We'll talk a little bit more about that later. But the career house right now is you looking at whether you're ready to uh, launch yourself either in a new career, could also be a promotion or hopefully getting that raise. And then we have Mars. Mars this time is in your eighth house, so you're probably looking over your taxes, kind of picking up maybe a little bit for what you were working on in August, but now the sun has cleared out of there and Mars is really having you look at those specific details how you can plan and strategize how you work with your taxes or it could also be investments too and if you're looking for any loans or home mortgages Mars is going to be helpful here because it's in the sign of Leo so I see how you're really like fronting your energy this month to get ahead to do those things that you really want to empower yourself in life and then uh, we have Jupiter. Jupiter is still here in the sign of Cancer for you in a wonderful sign of the seventh house, which is love and romance and your significant other. So you should see that uh, relationships with your partner here is still in an ongoing process. It's like you're expanding more of who you are in your togetherness. Some of you will be tried somewhat only to see if it can take on this expansion. But for most of you, you will just see that Jupiter is creating more bliss, more harmony, closer togetherness. You know, the seventh sign for you is the sign of Cancer, which is the crab. So you might have a little protection shield kind of going on there. But Jupiter is going to get under that shell. So enjoy. You have it here for a whole year until summer of next year. Saturn is still doing its thing there in the 11th house and it's going to be here with you for at least another couple of years. And what it's doing, it's, it's straining something or restraining, should I say, uh, your position in circles of friends and hopes and wishes and perhaps also organizations and groups for that matter. And when I'm saying it's restraining you, it could be that you might feel that you don't have the extra time to just be happy-go-lucky and be out there with your friends. It could also mean that more burdens or responsibilities are put upon you from groups or organizations. It's a time of growth. There's a new area here now that's been taking on shape and form ever since we started off here in 2013 and putting more responsibility on you. Now, let's look at what's happening here from the top of the month. In September, we start off on the September 1st with Sun and Pluto. Now they're lining up in a very good and powerful aspect. The Sun being you, Pluto coming in here as a trine. So it kind of tells me that if you've been working towards a goal uh, to get some kind of a cut through to the core, well this would be the day that you probably could receive some kind of an answer or affirmation that you're working in the right direction there. 
Then we have the new moon on the 5th, and for you, uh, Capricorn, that's in the ninth house. And that means that your affirmations and intentions should be focused on this area, um, since it has the power of a full year to kind of like allow yourself to have space and time to do what the ninth house represents, meaning either to get out and about and travel, or to set aside time to sit and write or publish, or to also set aside time for spiritual growth. The ninth house is all about um, your spirituality and how you fit in to this universe. So it's not necessarily religion, it could be that too, but it's more like looking at the overall picture and keeping your eye on that horizon where you know you're heading. And it's a house of research, so this is study time. And if you do your affirmations and your intentions here in this area, you might allow yourself in the months to come to take off a little extra time so you can get your spiritual food as well. Then we have Mercury moving out on the 8th, out of this ninth house area, into your career house. So you'll see that uh, this is the time that you're going to be communicating more either with your co-workers or with those higher up, or that you will have a whole lot more interaction with your clients. And then we have Venus, which currently is in this career house, moving into the social area. So even though Saturn has been a little restraining on you, Venus is going to come in, give you a little break here in September, just to lighten it up a little bit, so you can have some time, to, or some more time, should I say, to go spend with your friends and do those things that brings upon these hopes and dreams and wishes that you hold on the inside. The same Venus and Neptune will be trining, that is a beautiful alignment here on the, the 13th. So somewhere in there, when you're, you're speaking with your groups of, uh, and friends, or maybe it will be uh, from some kind of organization too, you might get an offer, or if it's coming from a, a friend, it might just be something that's given to you or offered you that really brings in a lot of inspiration. Neptune can do that, and Venus feels like the gift here. Now, Mercury and Pluto are not too happy just the day after here. It is uh, at heads with one another. Uh, Mercury is communication, how you communicate, uh, how your mental processing uh, is functioning. And it's up against the wall here with Pluto. So you might have a short fuse, or somebody around you could have a short fuse. So, And if it's somebody around you, Try to just remain non-reactive. Just let it go because it's a passing transit. And then sometimes when people are frustrated or angry, words can come out which they didn't really mean. So let it go. On the 14th, same day, Mars is aligned with Uranus. So this is a day where you can expect to have some unexpected situations popping up. Now, if you're in a relationship, it could come from your partner. Uh, something um, spontaneous perhaps. We never know with Uranus. It's just like out of the blue, a lightning bolt, poof, like this. But Mars has to do with goals and desires and so forth. So it might be a fun thing coming in here on this day. And then also we have a Mercury and a Mars uh, sextiling one another the same day as this is happening. So you might just get uh, a phone call or a text or a message saying, hey, pack a bag, let's go, if that is for travel. Now for you, these aspects, this Mars of yours is in the 8th house, and then Uranus we have here for you, just trying to get a feel where it's coming from. Okay, so it's between your 4th uh, and your 8th house, so it could be somebody within the family, or it could go to go visit some family. Um, but, but just see where it's coming from though. Maybe you're just out and about wanting to go look at a house, for example, because the fourth house also rules property and real estate. Then we have uh, some passion coming in here on the 18th, and this is Venus. Venus uh, here will be aligned with uh, Saturn, so first and foremost it's going to feel really uh, structured and, and um, which I say something that, that maybe you've gone and you've been waiting for, for somebody to come in and put something on the map, lock it in. That's what Saturn does best, you know, it's the planet with the rings, 
locking in Venus there. So that could be a very good thing for you. And at the same time, the same Venus, and this is why I'm thinking it's a good one, it is sextiling Pluto, so it's followed with a lot of passion here. So that's good for love this month. On the 19th, uh, Venus is touching upon your moon node, so it is something tying into your path, your destiny, and uh, with the passion and the lock-in here, hey, there might be some commitments to be looking forward to this month. And Pluto, yes, it has been asleep for so many months, and uh, in its retrograde phase, it hasn't been too active, and Pluto is that planet that gives us the point of transformation. When something needs to birth itself, it can't burst out unless it lets go and it sheds. So some of you might have been feeling that you've been shedding and letting go some of that old. So now you can start feeling that as he starts moving forward, you will get more of attraction towards those goals and aims that you've been passionately hanging on to. We have a healing day on the 20th. It's Venus and Chiron. So this is a day that you might just get some good news and, and somebody says something nice and pleasant, or it might be a day you might receive an apology for something, and that takes away those old wounds. So we have Venus and Jupiter, end of the month. We love, love, love those two planets together. Venus is love, and Jupiter expands everything it touches. So this is a day where you might feel that romance may expand. You might feel your own heart chakra opening up. Uh, Venus also rules money and income, and Jupiter may expand that as well. So we might see that you might feel that there's money also increasing for you. Now that would be between the area of your 11th and 7th house, so it's coming from uh, either some friends or some groups that you can get it, or maybe even organization, and it can also come from your partner. And it could be a balance between the two. It could also come from your partner, so you can go do your hopes and dreams. So this is pretty much what we have for you here, Capricorn, uh, this month. It's been a difficult uh, time for some of you, only because you're, you're shedding so deeply here with this Pluto in your first house, it's like you're transforming from the inside out. And thank God, Pluto moves so slowly that on a daily basis, we may not notice it, but it's like over time, over weeks, over the months, you might feel the, the, this pressure. And, uh, but do know that it's doing you something good. You might not see the full consequences of this before Pluto is done transiting this area of your chart. But, but roll with it, just go with it, because Pluto is actually a very good planet to have on your side so you can dynamically move ahead in life. I just want to end off with the full moon on September 19th. For you, that will be in uh, the third house, so you might have a little out of town date, a little short road trip perhaps, or somebody might be coming in from afar. Um, it would also perhaps have anything to do with uh, papers and uh, written word. If you're um, blogging or vlogging, it, you can probably also hear from your siblings if you haven't heard from them for a while. But, but it's an active house, so very active here on the 19th. So this is what we had here for September. Uh, Capricorn, it's always great to hear from you and uh, speak with you every month. But before you log off, do listen to your moon and rising sign too. Bye now.